Hey y'all, what's up? Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Welcome back. Honey, we got to talk about Bill Collective. I know I'm late, girl. Don't be cussing me out too much, honey. But we're going to talk about it. Okay, because JJ decided he finna go and let his mama come up into that house. And I really feel like he ain't get the proper permission or agreement from Sophia. He just did what the hell he wanted to do. So the mama is in the house. So Gucci not too happy about it. But as soon as the mama get there, she out here doing too much you know first of all i feel i feel a little way for so gucci i don't know if it's gonna end up being a bad thing it looks like his mama gonna get on his nerves more than she gonna get on damn so gucci nerves but i just feel like damn so gucci just got her daughter out the house now she got to sit up here and deal with your mama coming into her house it's like girl when am i gonna ever get some of my space back like dang but anywho the mama that came in she over there put her orders in and everything um talking about what she want what she don't want what she like what she don't like or whatever and i just feel like she's doing too much like i told y'all the mama is definitely there for filming purposes for real for real okay she's there as long when they asked her how long you here to stay she's like girl about as long as the cameras are here because i'm here so that i could be on tv because see last time my son was all on tv i didn't get the opportunity and this time i said y'all not gonna go do nothing without me i'm gonna be on this tv screen so that's what it's giving and he's giving her that opportunity all right um latrice latrice went to meet with cliff for dinner excuse me she went to meet with um with cliff for dinner and she wants to talk to him about boundaries and respect or whatever but what was getting me was when she said she wanted to talk to him about boundaries and respect when it comes to the public eye i'm like girl you need to be talking to him about boundaries and respect in general because for you, Latrice, it's like you keep giving him passes to disrespect the hell out of you and not respect the position that you hold you know what I'm saying? And if you want to be head of household or however y'all think about it, whatever, that's fine. But I don't think that you should be disrespected in that process because he want to be in charge. And being head of household don't, don't mean that you got to control everybody. You take care of it. You provide what you need to provide for the household. But don't think that you're going to control where I'm going, when I'm going, and how I'm going, and who the fuck I'm going to see when I get there. Like, what? I don't like that because he's not going to do that for you. And then she opens up the conversation talking about she want to apologize about some stuff. And, and hopefully he has some things he want to apologize for as well. He said, what you want to apologize about? Meaning I ain't got shit to apologize to you about and I'm not going to. So what the fuck you got to say? Because you the reason we in this mess. That's what it was given. So she apologized about not letting him know that she was going to Embar because it was last minute. I don't like that. You already got her location. If you need her location, do you really need does she really need to notify you where the hell she going when you already got her, no, her her location? As long as when I call you and you tell, as long as when I call you and you say I'm at M bar and if I was to check, you actually where the fuck you say that you at? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, why does she need to let, hey, give you a heads up and let you know anything? Like, I, I just can't. But anywho, Cliff says that he didn't mind her being at M bar. He just didn't like the fact that she was hanging out with the person that he kicked out the house. Because it seemed like she was choosing her side. And I just feel like you put her in a compromising position. Just because you don't like how he is or how he treated you or whatever the case is, you know that this is her employee. You know that this is one of her close friends. Why do you think that she's just not going to talk to this person? What is given is this. It is a compromising situation because, one, I feel like um, I feel like Cliff kind of got a little bit of a point. But I also feel like this is his tactic to try to isolate her. And that's what a lot of narcissists and abusive men do. They try and controlling men, especially they try to isolate you so that the only person you're really able to rely on is them so that they can continue to convince you that, oh, see what I do for you. See what I provide for you. See how I do this. See who I do that. You don't need them other folks that I, you need me. You need to listen to me. All of that. Like it's giving scheme It's giving a scheme. Now, I do kind of understand him when I would switch the when I switch the roles. Right. So if he had one of his friends that lived in the house and that man was being disrespectful or that woman or whoever was that gay woman or whatever was being disrespectful as hell to Latrice and Latrice came and said, hey, you got to get the hell out. She might have felt the way about her husband still frolicking or hanging out or whatever with this person. And it's like this person just disrespected me, Cliff. How dare you go and hang out with her or whatever, whatever. So when I reverse the roles like that, I definitely see where Cliff has a point because I wouldn't I would be team Latrice if that was the situation and I can't say that I'm not team Cliff in that situation just because I don't like his tactics or how he comes off as controlling he had every right to put that boy out his house 
I'm sorry he did. Like, don't be disrespecting me. I'm doing you a favor. You staying at my house and you using up my water and this and that because you ain't got no good water on your side of town. I'm doing you a favor. And it's okay for you to have your opinion about me, but some stuff you took too far. And I really feel like you took it too far because the cameras was here. So therefore, you're trying to embarrass me. Not only are you trying to embarrass me on a show that me and my wife brought you on in on, you trying to embarrass me in my house. Hell no. So I definitely feel Cliff on that. And I kind of feel him on feeling a way about her hanging out with the very person he done put the hell out the house. So I kind of see what Cliff is coming from. But at the same time, I also feel like it's giving manipulation and isolation as well. That's what I think. Now, Latrice, um, no, Cliff tells her. Um, Cliff says that she's cut he cut from a different cloth or something like that or they cut from a different cloth it made me think about Marceau when Marceau told Tisha we from two different sides of the tracks it's like girl what Cliff says that he helped out and gave um yeah he, we talked about all of this so he tells her that she wasn't being a supportive wife or whatever when she went down there she says we have communication issues he tells her listen I don't want to talk about you know basically he was like we ain't got no communication issues I'm like y'all very well do because here's the problem when Latrice is trying to communicate with you, you often interrupt her. You often never let her finish anything she has to say. You often make her feel silly for what she has to say as though your feelings are the only ones that matter. And I would have communications with a person like that as well. I would not want to have conversations with you because you always trying to make a matter of fact, I was in a relationship like that. Like you always try to make me feel like I'm wrong or I'm stupid or I need to fix this or I need to fix that. It's always about what I need to do, but never about what you need to do. No, absolutely. The fuck not. Right. So I, I just mm, I don't I don't like that. And then he's like, oh, she she um. Well, he said she don't want to talk about things. She just want to wake up the next day and hope that things work themselves out. Yeah, she do. And I feel her on that because you never listen to her. You don't even see her as equal. And that's the first problem that y'all got right there. Because if you saw her as equal, hello, you would think that she was equal enough for you to listen to the mother stuff that she has to tell you. But you you don't. You don't. You don't see her like that. And I, I really hate that. But let's go ahead and keep going. What else ended up happening on this show? She talks about how she wants boundaries to be respected. And he tells her that um, I think she said she was going to write down a list. He said, yeah, you can write down a list and you can show me your list. And I'll tell you which one, which boundaries we going to do and which ones we ain't. What? What? Sh girl, Latrice, girl, if you do not put your ass, your titties and your cootie twat up on that table so he know what the fuck going on. Like we tell these men, put your balls on the table or you need to put everything on the table at this point. Because I don't know who the fuck he think he talking to. You're not going to control my boundaries. If I tell you this is a problem and you don't need to do this, then don't think that you're going to tell me that, no, it's fine. I'm going to do that anyway. That's not how that works. You know, so I don't know. I just don't like the fact that he told her, y'all, we ain't equal. You ain't 50-50 with me, you know, um, as long as I'm in charge and I'm here, I'm alive, I'm in charge of the household. You won't have to abide by what I say and wait your turn, basically. I don't like that. Like, girl, and then you over here saving face with your whole idea of what you think a wife is supposed to be. You think a wife is supposed to endure hardship with her husband, especially when the hardship is coming from her husband. Like, girl, what? You think you're supposed to endure the bullshit and the disrespect from your husband all because you're a wife? Girl, you have a horrible mentality of what a wife is in my personal. But anywho, Sophia, Marie, and um, Akeisha, they link up and Marie tells Akeisha about Letitia's business. Everybody telling Akeisha about somebody else's business, child. Tell her about y'all business. But anywho, Akeisha tells her about Latrice's business. Here you go. Okay, because Latrice not going to like that. But you running over there telling Marie the B-I-T-C-H they don't like Latrice about what's going on with Latrice. And then they say something about she's having a party or whatever. And then Marie says she's not going. She don't trust that woman. She's a snake and she's sneaky or whatever. I feel like some of the things Marie say, says about Latrice is not 100% uh, lies. Not 100% lies. Um, the more I just kind of watch some stuff, I'd be like, yeah, I think Latrice be trying to play dumb about some stuff at times, but then be trying to talk real big when she in the confessionals. Like, I don't know, Latrice. We like you, girl, but we got our eye on you. Um, Gucci drags Latrice talking about her hair machine and it being repo. Now, Sophia, girl, you wrong for that. 
Now, I know you mad at her. I know you mad at her, but I feel like you didn't even have to go that low talking about her business like that now. Unless she took a shot at your business, then y'all take a shot at hers. But did she take a shot at your business? You ain't have to come for her like that because you didn't get the deal. Go out there and get another deal. Like, what's going on? All right. Anywho, um, Cliff and Glenn link up. Uh, Glenn lets Cliff know that he done put a recorder in Latrice's car. I'm, I'm sorry, in Letitia's car so he could hear some conversations. And that's when he learned about Marie getting the apartment for Letitia. Sir, you are a weird O if this is indeed true. You already know I don't believe shit about you and Letitia's storyline. Y'all are very much so together. Ain't left each other in all these years and ain't gonna leave each other. Hello? Um, but if you did this, I mean... I wouldn't be surprised because I feel like she knows all of this about you. She knows how you are, how controlling you are. And um, I slick feel like she okay with it. So for me, um, you're weird. You're weird as hell. And that's just, mm -mm. I couldn't tolerate. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Anywho, he started talking about how he got blue balls and all of this other stuff. Every time he talk about his wife, it's always in the form of sex. That's really what he missed the most. He don't really miss his wife. He don't miss his family unit. He misses the sex that he has with his wife. He over there spending most of the time talking about how he got blue balls. And we know that you don't because we sh I'm sure that hand over there going to work. Cliff tries to convince him to put on a dress. And some people were saying that they're trying to insinuate that Letitia may be gay. Girl, I don't know. She might be a lesbian. I don't know what the lady got going on. I'm not necessarily sure, but it was giving every bit of weird. And I'm tired of people meeting up with Cliff and telling Cliff all of their business. And Cliff is trying to give y'all advice when he got his own glass windows and his own house because the shit ain't going so well over there either. But he ain't sharing nothing with nobody. Girl, let me keep going. Latrice, she over there talking to her mama, talk about she don't get advice from everybody, but she gets it from her mama because some people don't want to see you be successful. Latrice, I want you to get that fucking thought out your head. Because ain't nobody jealous of you and the shit you got going on with your husband. Whatever you thinking, you need to let it go. Some people don't want to see you be happy. That may be true, but it's not true about you and him. Understand that. I don't know too many women that want to be in your position who you, a woman like you who can have her own, but still relying on this man and then allowing this man to disrespect you and treat you like you're his child. While you also sleep in another room, therefore, you're not being pleased sexually, however you would like to be when it comes to him. Like you got a lot of stuff that's going on and you have the audacity to think that people not wishing you well. No, these people are telling you what's a fact. These people will want you to know that this N.I.G.G.A. ain't it and you not at a place where you want to prove them right. That's why you over there just hanging on just to hang on. Even your mama wants you to walk away. And I can tell from that conversation because she sees you in her. And she sees him in your dad. Yikes. So her mama give her advice and tells her a relationship should be 50-50. And Latrice says that um, she admits that she could stand up to everybody else. But when it comes to him, it's like she ain't got no backbone. She just kind of like bows down to him or something. Then her mom see, says um, she sees right through Cliff being controlling. And she said this man just wants you to be a housewife barefoot and pregnant. I said, come on, mama. Mama knows. Mama it knows and she, I know she's like you know I love him and this and that and he's a good man but what she said he's a good man but he's a jealous man or whatever the case is and I feel like that ain't a good man like why are we attaching he good and he jealous like no the fuck he's not because if that jealousy that he has drives everything else what the fuck makes him a good man oh he good because he paid the bills and provide and got a nice house and stuff like that or he a good man because he did good for himself financially like, what the hell makes him a good man? Like, let's not and say that we did, okay? Her mom talks about, you know, marrying his dad and stuff like that and says she wasn't just with him to be with him. She had to fight and do this and do that, you know. He wanted her barefoot and pregnant, and she was like, she did that. She laid down and had about, what, six kids or something like that by this man? Like, girl, she trying to save you. You over there talking about you don't talk to everybody about your relationship, but you talk to your mama, but she ain't even listening to your mama. Girl, go ahead. Go ahead on. Um, she does go on to to admit that she feels like she's afraid. She she gets afraid that he may leave her or something like that, and she won't have nobody. And because of that, that's the very reason why I think she would go on to get pregnant. One to please him, two to have some type of attachment to him, 
forever and three so that she'll never be lonely because she'll have a child like that's what it's given to me and i hate that for you latrice girl get your mind together you're very business minded i need everything else to be in alignment akisha meets with her mama about her will her business all this stuff we learned that her mom which is actually her aunt and the sister to her dad akisha was born by way of you know an outside kid I'm sorry. Yeah. her uh, By way of an affair. So she's an outside child or whatever. Her mom was an anesthesiologist and she's also somewhat of a psychiatrist. I think that she's like part time or something with her psychiatry or whatnot. Um, so they go over a lot of things. And this was really a scene for Akisha to pretty much brag about how successful her family is. Like, even though she was thrown away as though her mom or whoever didn't want her, she still rose up from the ashes or whatever. So that's what this scene was about. Glenn over there working on a rap song for Letitia Chai. Um, he learns about his grandma being in the hospital. Um, he stops by before going to see his grandma. He go over there and talk to Letitia because he's seeking for some sympathy from Letitia so that he can let her know, like, hey, this is what's going on. I need you to come with me and we'll hunch afterwards because, you know, that's what it is that we do or whatever. And he's going to continue to play on her emotions when it comes to the situation about the grandma, about how much he need her in the family and shit. And we'll see. OK, lady ain't going to never leave. OK. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't bang. I didn't blame Letitia for wanting to go and check on the grandma. They've been in each other's lives since they were hi in high school. So it's like, okay, she damn near like your grandma too. So yeah, go over there with him, check on her, make sure she's good if that's what you want to do and all of that, and go from there. But that's really it. That's all I got on Bell Collective, honey. Y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below on what y'all thought about the episode. I'm Jamie. That's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie. That's me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.